Hello again, fans and audience members. Uh, welcome to my next Blu-ray DVD collection update. Um, as I said in my previous one, I've got a ton to catch up on from uh, May or June. So um, I split this up into multiple videos, mainly to kind of pad up my channel and uh, just so I'm not rambling on too long about too many video or too many movies. And if I do take a little bit of extra time, then it's not the end of the world because it's not like I've got like a ton to go through. So, anyways, we're gonna get right started. Um, as per usual, as I've been doing, I'm gonna start with the DVDs, and then we're gonna end off on the Blu-rays. So the first one is. The complete Rambo collector's set. Um, I was very fortunate to find this at a secondhand store for very cheap, and I was also very fortunate um, that my mother in law actually paid for it. I'm very thankful for that. Um, but yeah, um, I really enjoyed um, the newest Rambo, the last one that came out in like 2008. Um, but that was just titled Rambo, and I've always wanted to see First Blood, First Blood Part 2, and Rambo 3 um, since seeing that, so I was very happy to find this and get it. Um, that being said, I still not, have not watched First Blood or First Blood Part 2 or Rambo 3. Um, like my last video, you're probably going to hear that a lot. I haven't watched or haven't seen, but... Um, yeah, I just, this was an amazing find, and uh, it's just a great looking uh, collection. It's got some great artwork, uh, great design of the packaging. Um, would have been even more amazing if it was the Blu-ray, but you know what? Uh, beggars can't be choosers, and uh, you know what? It's a pretty awesome set, despite being DVD. So, that's the first one. Uh, the second one that I picked up was the... Uh, Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2 pack. I saw Jeepers Creepers many years ago and thought it was pretty decent and have always wanted to check out the second one and never got around to it. Could never find a copy of it. So around Halloween time last year they had some horror movies on sale and picked this one up for like five bucks. So um, haven't gotten around to watching the DVDs yet, um, but uh, maybe one day soon. I don't know. But yeah. Um, like I said, I remember the first one being pretty entertaining. Kind of weird, but cool. Kind of stylish, creepy. And I've heard uh, the second one's even better, I think. Maybe the second one's worse. I can't remember. I can't remember what people say about this. So, yeah, Anyways, that's uh, Jeepers Creepers. This actually goes by a lot faster when I don't know what to say about the movie because I haven't seen it. <laughs> uh, the next pick up here was the four film favorites. It's the Ocean's trilogy and the original Ocean's Eleven with uh, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Dean, Dean Martin. Um, I really like the Ocean's films. Um, haven't watched this set yet. In fact, we actually tried watching Ocean's Eleven the day we bought this, uh, but we couldn't hear it over our air conditioner, and it was either melt in the heat or watch the movie, so we... Or it was either melt in the heat and watch the movie or not watch the movie, and stay cool, so we chose to stay cool. Um, we had the intention of watching this later, and we haven't yet. But, uh, so the last time I watched these is actually when I reviewed them back in, like, 2011, 2012, when I reviewed them for this site, or for this channel. So, um, yeah, that's how long it's been since I've seen these, but, uh, I remember the first one was really entertaining and really funny. I remember the second one had too many plot threads and was really hard to follow and it was just really convoluted but I remember the third one wasn't as good as the first one but it was definitely better than the second one and I've never actually seen the Frank Sinatra version so that's all I've got to say about the Ocean's Trilogy and the last DVD is a film that I've never actually seen uh, but it was uh, on sale I think it was a free for deal or something like that and that is Weird Science um, this is a classic 80s film Starring um, Anthony Michael Hall and uh, written and directed by John Hughes. So right there, that's a you know the whole John Hughes thing. That's a um, good selling point right there. Heard good things about this. Um, 
Bird's Eye. That's like one of those classic '80s films that you just you got to see if you're a big movie fan. And uh, I've not watched it yet. That's all I'm gonna say about that. So, <laughs> um, so now we're gonna go on to the um, Blu-rays. And this first one again, I hate saying it, um, is another film that I have not watched yet. And you are all going to hate me that I haven't watched this yet. And that is Wonder Woman. That's right. I have not watched Wonder Woman yet. I have not seen it yet. Um, kept making plans to go see it when it was in theaters. And kept getting derailed. And then, so I just bought it the day it came out. And my wife and I keep making plans to watch it. And those plans keep falling through. Something keeps coming up. Or we're just not in the mood to watch a two and a half hour superhero movie. So, um, I still got this one in my sights. I'm still trying to find the time and opportunity to watch it. I might actually watch it after doing this video. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's Wonder Woman. That's all I can say about that one, because I haven't watched it, like all my other movies. I buy movies, and I don't watch them for a long period of time, because I buy them when I, when they're cheap or when I see them, and then... I have them so I can watch them when I'm ready to watch them. It's kind of how I do it. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, moving on. Um, next one I picked up was Air Force One with Harrison Ford. I haven't seen this since I was really young. I was probably too young to actually watch this. But um, I remember this being a really entertaining movie. Of course, I, remember, I know the, the famous line from it, Get off my plane. Um, but so I'm really interested to rewatch this Um older and with a better understanding of the movies and how they work and stuff um but yeah this was another one that was like really cheap when i found it so i had to pick it up when i saw it because i think i think i was looking at it on amazon and it was about 10 bucks and then i found it at a grocery store of all places for five on blu-ray so i was like you know what i like going with amazon but uh it's cheaper to get it here so i did Hey, look, a film that I've actually watched twice, even. Once on Blu-ray, once in theaters. And that's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Uh, my wife and I are big Harry Potter fans. Um, I actually introduced my wife into, or introduced her to the Harry Potter franchise, and she immediately became hooked. And uh, so when they announced that they were doing Fantastic Beasts, we were kind of skeptical, especially when they said that they're going to do, like, five movies. Um, but we went in with... Um, you know, open minds, and I uh, was actually pleasantly surprised by this. Um, this is definitely a first film. There's a lot of exposition going on. There's a lot of um, whimsicalness happening, and the main story kind of gets shuffled around a lot, and it doesn't really know where its focus is. Sometimes it wants to be the fun um, creature-catching movie and be silly and lighthearted and fantastical, and then other times it wants to be really dark and serious and have this brooding undertone story. So um, it is kind of a mixed bag. Um, I know a lot of people were kind of indifferent to it. I really enjoyed it, and I'm actually really looking forward to seeing where they go with this. Um, the new film, Crimes of Grindelwald, comes out, I think, in November of this year. So... I'm really looking. I'm actually really looking forward to that, and I'm interested to see where they go with this whole uh, franchise. The next film is another film that I've actually watched, and that is Assassin's Creed. Um, I picked this one up um, for my birthday with some birthday money that I was given because I really wanted to see it. I I'm not a huge huge fan of the game. Like I enjoy playing them, but I'm not like die hard dive into all the lore and stuff. Um, I just kind of play them as they are, and they're entertaining. And I was just hoping for some entertainment out of the movie. I know a lot of people were really crapping on it when it came out, so I went in with a lower expectation than um, a higher one. And I don't know how I feel about it. I'm very torn on it still. I watched it back in, like, June, and I'm still very torn on it. Um, it was actually very reminiscent of Sucker Punch, after I watched that, and not so much in terms of the content of the film, but the fact that it, like, bounces from, like, action set pieces set in one area, and then the stories in a different area, it kind of bounced back and forth, 
like Sucker Punch did, so I kind of walked out with the same feeling of, I don't know if I enjoyed that or if I only enjoyed half of it. Um, I felt like they could have done a lot more with this. I feel like if the movie spent more time focusing on the assassin stuff in the past, it would have been a lot better. Um, but uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, they can't all be winners, especially video game movies, apparently. So... That's my take on Assassin's Creed. Uh, the next film is another one that I've watched. I've watched this several times now, actually, and that is Despicable Me 3. My wife loves the Despicable Me movies. Um, I think the first one is okay. I think the second one's actually pretty good. And I think the Minions should not exist. Not because I don't like the Minions, I just did not like the Minion movie. And I think part of that was the um, publicity. The trailers gave a lot of it away. And so when I actually went and saw the movie, I felt like I'd already seen it. Um, but Despicable Me 3, I was kind of torn about seeing, mainly because of how the Minion movie was. Um, and then I heard a lot of um, negativity about it, so I was kind of going in, kind of hoping and kind of trying to be open-minded, but also kind of expecting it to be kind of crap. And it's actually pretty entertaining. Um, there's a couple of side plots that I could have done without and could have, I think the movie would have benefited if they focused on what they were already talking about. Um, the concept of Gru having a brother, the villain, Balthazar Brat. They should have focused way more on him because he was fantastic. He was hilarious. He was energetic. Um, but overall, the film is actually pretty decent. The colors are very vibrant that's the one thing i got to give illumination credit for is that their um their movies are very vibrant in their colors and um they've got good energy too so i gotta give them that credit as well so a good entry into the whole despicable me franchise um i do have like a long list of how i would have improved this movie but i'm not going to get into that but um yeah definitely better than the minion movie itself And the last film on this video, and you're gonna you're gonna hate me for saying that I've seen this and I haven't seen Wonder Woman, but um, it's just how it is. Uh, Transformers Five, yeah, I, I went out and bought Transformers Five, saw it in theaters. Coincidentally, with uh, Despicable Me Three at the drive-in. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I I I like it. I like these movies. They're bad their dialogue is terrible the cgi is overabundant the jokes fall flat half the time but i these are like the ultimate guilty pleasure movies for me i don't know why but i can't explain it i really can't i just enjoy them they're fun they're loud they're yeah um I do have to say that Anthony Hopkins was absolutely hysterical in this film. Um, he was just, like, insanely, like, he just had this, like, crazy persona, and he's just acting like a total goofball, which was really kind of fun to watch, because he usually does, like, more serious things. Um, yeah, I don't know. I like it. I dare I said it, and I'm not totally ashamed of it, I confused and baffled by it but i said it i like the transformers movies i can watch them they can be overtly long i was actually glad that this one was shorter than the uh, fourth film um i still think the first one's the best the second one's a total piece of crap third one about the halfway point is when it gets good the fourth one has some pacing issues and is overtly long but is once the final climax starts happening it's a lot of fun and then yeah this one was fun too there i said it okay that's it for this video i'm going to go hang my head in shame um for liking transformers yeah okay um anyways thanks for watching guys and uh if you like this don't forget to subscribe if you yourself are jonesing for film